Hello everyone, it's Amy, and I am here for Build Your Stash and Craft uh, Supplement Video number 15. This is an attachment to week 39, which was toilet paper embellishments. And so these are, I'm going to work on some of the embellishments that we made in week 39. And what I wanted to start with was the little crab that I made. Um, I wanted to color him. And I want to see, being that this is toilet paper, I'm going to guess that the um, the coloring will bleed, which is kind of what I'm hoping for. And I'm hoping it bleeds, you know, nicely. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put red and then orange and then yellow for his eyes. And then I'm hoping, well, the red is more of a pink. But, um, whoops. And the reason I'm putting the... I'm just having the cookie cutter on there still is um, because I just it'll make it easier for me I don't have to kind of try and stay within the lines it's going to keep me within the lines and then we'll see whether it actually bleeds or not looks like it's possible if I get I think quite a bit near the edges I think that that will make it bleed but I have this little crab and I don't have any idea why you know there is no rhyme nor reason to art not necessarily um, and so with him I wanted to put him on my journal that I made with the feather on it uh, the build your stash and craft journal and um, so that's that's what I had thought of when I saw him. And it's partly because he's like looking up. He looks like he's kind of dreamy. He's thinking about something. And that's what I thought when I first saw him. And so I'll show you when, the, when we get that far. I'll show you what we're going to do with it. And I had a little brush. Here it is. Because I think I'm going to put orange down in his little legs there. Just have to kind of drip it in that one. I can't even fit my little brush in there. But I'm not going to lift it till I'm done so we'll have to wait and see how it works out. But so we're getting very close to making our full year. And I'm really hoping that I can figure out my last few videos. Because they're going to shut down the video maker. I might have to try and just figure out how to do them without starting and stopping and just doing like maybe two parts or something. Now, because these colors are so close, all I'm doing with my brush is I'm just wiping it off on a paper towel. You can rinse it if you want to make sure that you don't um, contaminate your colors. A little bit more over here. Okay, are we ready for the reveal? see what it looks like oh yay he looks really cute and it did bleed together really nicely I like that I am going to Ooh, that was a little bit too much I'm gonna put a little bit on the white around the edges where it didn't bleed because I don't really want white edges but I love how each of the compartments they all bled together and put that yellow there and where's my lid I can't leave lids off if I do we would have a very colorful table just put a little bit of orange here and around here
trying to decide where I want this to stop at, but I think I'm going to come all the way up to this point and then do the pink right in the middle. Oh, I think he turned out so cute. I'm so happy with that. That's what I was hoping for. So that's another nice thing about these. Um, the toilet paper embellishments is that when you use something that's very liquidy, that will it will soak in and, and bleed. Which I just love the looks of when things bleed together. And there we go. He's done. Except that he has to dry now. Ah, this is what he looks like. Isn't he cute? I just love him. Okay, and he is going to go. This is my Build Your Stash journal. And I'm going to put him right here above the window. I'm going to leave it so you can see the Build Your Stash. The end craft part is going to be gone. And then he's going to have a little thought bubble up here. So that's what I'm going to do with him. Now, I'm going to let him dry. But the way I'm going to attach him is I'm going to attach him with the caulk because I can use that caulk to fill in these dents a little bit. It will glue it down and it will help hold our dents that we made um, so that they don't get so, so he doesn't get so squished. But I think he's going to look really cute on there. I think that whole thing was just out of shot. Sorry about that. But this is where he's going to go. And then with the little thought bubble up here. So that's what I'm going to do with him. And then um, I'll be back to show you what I'm going to do with the butterfly. Came back and I decided that while I had my colors out, I was going to go ahead and dye these two also because I was so happy with the way that, that they turned out, that it turned out on the other one. So I'm just going to put these colors on here. And the butterfly I'm going to use on a box. And that's why I left a little bit of the edging around him. Because that will make it easier to glue him down. Well, actually, not really to glue him down. I'm going to put him in some texture paste. And so I'll be able to bury those parts into the texture paste. And it will hold on to him much better than if he was just flat kind of sitting on top. going to hit the edges of this also so that I've got my color there I hope I'm not doing this out of shot because I keep looking down instead of looking through the camera and there is no when you're using the dyes like this, the beautiful thing about it when you're when you're trying to let them bleed into each other is that you don't have to worry about exactly where they go because you want that to happen anyways. So there's my yellow. I'm going to put the orange on the dots and down the center and then put the pink around that. And I just really wanted to thank all of you that have been following this series. I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate all of your comments. It has made it so easy for me to keep going. Because I know that there are some people that really look forward to it each week. And it really makes it worth my while to do it. So I really want to thank you for that. I'm going to get a little orange up in here. Because I really do appreciate it. I appreciate all of my subscribers. When I started this, I never thought, you know, I never even thought anything about subscribers or that I would get any. And the more I got, the more I was just so happy that people enjoyed what I was doing. It really isn't about the number of subscribers. It's more about the fact that I know people are enjoying these videos, whatever videos that I may have made. And so it's really nice to hear the comments and 
sometimes see what people have done. It's really cool to see like if you've done if you've showed someone how to do something and they make some and show it and it's just like so neat to know that you've inspired someone because I've been inspired by so many people here on YouTube that I can't even name them all. There are just so many wonderful artists and crafters here. And there really is, as far as I'm concerned, you know, there's not really a necessarily a difference. I'm going to add a little more yellow in a few spots. There's not really a difference between an artist and a crafter. And this is my opinion. But um, it just all has to do with creating. Now, granted, some artists may sell their products, and I used to belong to some art groups that, we're very much into the fact that arts and crafts were not the same. And I just got tired of that because it's like, yes, it is. Creating is creating. I don't care what it is, you know. And the arts cover so many different things. And it's all about creativity, whether it's singing, you know, playing instruments. Look at that one. Beautiful. Um, you know, whatever it is. So, And, you know, art is not about how well you do something either. It's about whether or not, oh, see, I'm really good at that. Good thing there's a dent in my box. Well, let's just throw that in there. <laughs> this is a beautiful cloth I'll be able to use for something. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Move that out of the way. I need some more paper towels. I was going to say I really can't believe I did that, but I really can believe that I did that because that's just me. Always has been. I'll put this one on top of here and let those two soak together. It's a good thing I have a plastic tablecloth on too. Okay, so this is the front of my little pendant. I'm going to kind of round it back up again. There we go. Okay. Back to where we started. But, but no, I just, you know, if you enjoy doing your crafting, if you enjoy doing art, then you are an artist. And the more that you do it, the better you will get at it. And there are a lot of things that I have done in my life, and I've sold art, and I've done art shows, um, but, you know, there are things that I have learned here from people that just take me forever to get the hang of it. And the more that I do it, the better I get. And some things I never really get the hang of. Because we're all better at certain things than others. So if you enjoy crafting, just craft. And don't worry about what anybody else thinks about it. Let's see if I can pull a little bit of that back. There we go. Now on this one I'm going to put, look, my hands are yellow, I wonder why. I'm going to put some glitter nail polish on that one when it's dry and drill a hole in the top and see what that looks like. Or maybe a picture, I'm not exactly sure. And the butterfly is going on a box. And the crab is going on my book. So I need to let all of these things dry. And then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. And I have made this little box out of a cake box. And um, I am going to show you how to embed one of these when you leave the edges on into your um, texture paste. We've got this Max Patch Spackle from the Dollar Tree. And we are just going to stir that up and put it on top of our box. 
if I can find my stir stick. And so we are going to have a texture top box when we're done here. And I'm just going to put some of this out here and spread it around and then add more if I need it. Now I'm going to not quite go to the edges because this isn't going to bend. This is basically a type of plaster of Paris. And um, so you don't want to go over your edges. That's why I've closed my box up and I didn't do it flat because I didn't want to miss those corners. I want to know exactly where they're folding. And just kind of um, not make it even. Just kind of, you know, a little rounded part here and a little rounded part there. But just make sure that you... Um, you don't want just a little thin spot that's doesn't have any texture to it. You know, you want it to raise up just a little bit. The thicker it is, the longer it will take to dry but I do kind of like mine a little bit thick. Now, I've just got a base coat of red paint on my box, and then I'll go in and I will actually finish painting the box after I get this together and it dries. So we're just gonna get this all spread out on here. I think I need a little bit more over here. And you don't have to put the, the texture on the top. I just love the look of texture on a box. I don't know why. I always seem to, when I make a box, I like the top to have something interesting to look at. Although I find problems with that because when you do that, you can't stack them on top of each other. Okay, so we have that all spread out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to kind of embed this into our spackle. Now, since I don't have anything at all over here, I am going to put just a little bit of white glue in this spot. The spackle should hold it. That shouldn't be a problem. Um, but if you open your glue, that would be better. Couldn't figure out why it wouldn't come out. So yeah, I'm just going to just put a little bit on here, just for safety's sake. And like I said, really probably don't need it at all. And then you just take it and kind of push it in a little bit. Give it a wiggle. You know what? I don't want him straight. I want him this way. Can I give them a wiggle down in there? That wiggling it kind of works that spackle up underneath of it um, to grab the back because it had a little bit of a, a dent in the back. And then you just take some more of your texture paste and you just come in here and you want to bring it from the outside over top of that lip. You can push that lip down a little bit. Push it down in there. And then just cover it all the way around. And then once you get this all dry, you can paint it with any type of paint. You could even dye it with your with your dyes. I'm going to use paint because um, if I dye it with the dyes, the butterfly will just kind of blend in because I dyed it with the dyes. Let me 
got a little tab down here, so I want to make sure that I get that covered up. And we're not really covering it to covering it, we're covering it to get it embedded into the texture paste to make it nice and solid. So we're just going to go all the way around. And then once you get it all done, before you set it aside to dry, um, make your texture paste look the way you want to, you want it to look. And um, then just set it aside to dry or use your heat gun and dry it. Make sure it gets good and dry before you paint it. And being that it's plaster, plaster does not take a real long time to dry. And even if it's kind of thick, because um, plaster kind of, I don't want to say it dries from the inside out, but it just dries really well and pretty fast. And you can get as picky about it as you want to. And there we go. And then I'm just going to spread this out however I want it. Now, you can do like this and it will kind of get like little peaks on it like that. Um, I do that sometimes on some projects. I don't really want it for this one, being that this is a box and it's going to be moved around and used quite a bit. Um, those little points would probably break off eventually. So I'm just going to kind of just give it a little texture here and there, smooth it around. A little bit of my ink is coming off into the texture paste. That's totally okay, because we're going to paint it anyways. And when we're done, we're going to seal the whole thing, so then our ink won't move at all. And there we go. So that's how you embed them into your texture paste. So if you want to... There we go. Um, it just kind of makes it look like it's part of it. And also, it, it holds it on there nice for something like a box top. Um, you know, it really gives it a good hold. So if you want to do that, you just don't peel your paper, toilet paper off the edges when you take it out of the mold. And then you'll have those edges, like this one. It has edges all the way around. You'll have those to embed. Now, this one I didn't leave like this to embed. I left it like that to actually put on top of a project because I just liked the way that that one looked when it dried. So I just painted the whole thing because I'm going to use it like that. So, alrighty. Well, I will be back shortly to show you. I've done three projects, and I will show you them all finished in just a little bit. And there's that. Thank you. Okay, I'm back to just show you how things kind of turned out. So this is how our duck turned out after he dried and I cut around the edges. And I decided, I haven't decided what to do with the pendant yet. So I decided to just leave it so that I don't just do something to it just to finish it and then not have it be what I want. So I did put a clear coat of fingernail polish on the balloons. So they're ready to go like on a happy birthday card with some strings hanging down. And then we've got our little turtle and the flower that we started with. So these are the ones that I haven't done anything with, but this little guy right here, I thought he's so cute. And see, he's hollering. He's telling everybody, Ron! <laughs> I just think he's so cute. And that's what I think about when I saw him with his mouth open. And these are the projects that I have just about finished. Um, this one, I still need to do something to the telephone. And um, I painted it purple 
because I wanted it dark because, you know, phones used to be kind of black. And then I did go around the edging with a black pen and just put a little 411 in the middle right there. But I need to do something because it's too dark and it doesn't stand out at all. But And then I just put Give Me a Ring here. And this is one of the cards that we made earlier in one of our earlier projects when we were doing, I think it was when we were doing the watercolor paper. So, but then you'll just open it up and you can put a white piece of paper in there with a sentiment on it. And um, I thought that that one turned out nice. And then the heart I just popped up with, the, with our caulk so that that's got some nice dimension to it. So that's what that card looked like that I made. And then I put our butterfly on the box and I have painted the box and um, put some flowers on it. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna make a little type of a latch here. It will also tuck inside and, or I could put a, I don't wanna put a rubber band around it because um, we've got the butterfly right in the middle. And this one I covered with the, uh, the Mod Podge that we had left over, but I'm gonna to have to put some white glue or something over top of this because, um, you know, Mod Podge is sticky. So, and I made this box to hold our prompt blocks. So that's the box, and I even put flowers on the inside flaps. So that's how the box turned out. I'm really happy with that, and I love the little butterfly there in the center. And then our little crab went on our journal. And when I saw him just like looking up to the skies like that, the one thing I thought was, I dream that I can fly. That he was dreaming he could fly. And so I thought he'd go perfect on the journal that we've been working on, well, that I've just done a little bit in, um, with the feather on the front. So I did some some outlining. Now this is gonna need some doodling and you know, it's the, the cover is not finished, but um, but I do like the way that that is looking, and I just love that little crab looking up like that. So, but these are the types of things that you can make uh, with your little embellishments, and I hope that you try it and that you have fun. And if you don't have any kind of cookie cutters and you can't get to the Dollar Tree, you can do them in the the ring that goes around your milk jug. You can fill that with your with your toilet paper and water and, you know, make it into a round embellishment. Um, you know, there's all sorts of things you could do that. And while it's still wet, kind of pull in the edges and make it look like a flower. So there's lots of things that you could do with this project. I hope that you, that you play with it. I hope that you have fun and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.